Yeah, I'm going to start a short video on coin ring making using some of the tools that I've purchased and um, made some of my own. Uh, as you'll notice, most of, the, most of the tools come from Ardendorf Machinery. Um, little grinder, my gas, my heat, my dyes, my fluids, six ton press, does most all the bending work. A little mini bench grinder turned into a little mini lathe to hold and do some grinding and polishing work as well. And today I've got a copper nickel half dollar from 2004 which I will be bending and having that on the outside of the ring. Well, let's get started. What I've done is I created my own punch using a woodworking chuck, full jaw, self-centering. Um, so every time punch goes through, I will get a perfect centralized hole for bending. Coin is in, perfectly centralized. And then we can use our press to get down there. Obviously we want that central as well. And through. There we now have perfect centralized hole for making and bending the ring. Now that we have the hole in there, um, the last thing we want is any cracks to happen. So, deburrer, take away any chance of a crack happening that you don't want so the sandpaper just to give it a little bit of a smoother working so it doesn't damage my tools for bending and getting it shaped When any metal gets folded, even coins, may they be silver or not, uh, copper and nickel, they need to be heated up. No, it doesn't make the coin harder, it does make it more malleable so that you can bend it without cracking it. Obviously, while it's as hot as can be, We'll just quench it in water and it's ready to fold and bend. Coin in my folding die. First fold is a little bit bigger than my smaller unit which is which I will be moving over to because um, this is going to be a, a smallish coin ring. Um, obviously using my different folding dies. Um, these are just to get you going, get you started, so you can move down to a smaller die if required, and then obviously your main folding dies to do the actual work. Uh, I use quite a lot of tape. Now, um, oh, by the way, packs of 10, it's worth it, and yeah, you go through quite a bit of that. That's to uh, safeguard damage to your folding dies. And most importantly, to save the coin as much detail as possible, especially on the inside, so that it looks great again. 
Right, first one is now ready. Um, obviously the main thing is to watch that you go in nice and straight, that you don't go skew, because the last thing you want is a coin that's off center or starts going off center or you get a wobble and then it causes other kinds of problems. Um, so constantly taking it out and checking it, it's very important, making sure it is nicely centralized. As you can see, this one moved a little bit. So we will take it out and put it back into position so that it can go nice and simply down. All right, as you can see now, it's nice and small, a bit smaller now for my smaller die, which is where I'm going to be doing most of my work on, um, and it will fit in there perfectly. Now, obviously, before we start bending again, I need to just sand this edging again inside here, um, so that even using my deburring tool to make sure there's no cracks of anything while I've been stretching it, because um, the last thing we want is this to crack down here, then it's a throw away again and as you can see the detailing on the inside there is still pretty good so yes we are halfway there i have already stuck some sandpaper on, onto it again making sure there's no sharp edge so it doesn't crack and uh, it still looks good so let's get it into the next die and then uh, fold it from there but firstly again we're going to be heating it up so that it is more malleable to work with. Back in there again. I'm going to be using this one here just to get it going. And as you can see, I've put enough a thread tap on because we want to try and save as much of that inner working detail as possible. So I've set up the die and let's go. Again, we watch to make sure that it goes in nice and square. See so here, already starting to pull slightly skew. So now I'm going to reset and do it again. Okay, reset done. And now we go and give it a couple of jags. Not too bad. Okay, all right. And I think we'll do there for now. So far, so good. No cracks, no nothing. Gonna give that a bit of a, a sand and a clean up again to keep protecting the coin. Next. Uh, dies up, we finish using the small one, thinner one, and I've gone to the bigger one so I can get to my requirements a little bit quicker and easier, and yeah, I'm not going to fold him out to its size and then uh, we'll start going in reverse, it goes, and that's as far as it'll go. and minimal damage to the inside no damage obviously to the outside I used a little bit of copper slip just to give a little bit of protection as well right now again I'm going to clean this up here and then I'm going to start folding it in the reverse and hopefully get to a nice straight Cool thing. I've skipped past obviously heating it up again and sanding it again. Um, I've now set it up so that I can go into reverse. Uh, some guys have ring stretchers that they do it with. Um, I don't have one of those yet. Uh, but obviously something for the future. So for now, I'm doing it the old style way. I'm going to use my dies to get it. It goes in reverse. Now, some guys use thread tape. Um, to protect things, um, I like to use these pads, round pads that you get 
and it protects my die and protects everything that's happening inside there. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down because I want to check it and see if it's okay. No. Not too bad. It's got a little bit of a kink there, which we will, will now heat this up again and then hope for the best that I can get rid of it. Just got to watch that one spotty there. You can see it looks a bit dodgy, but there's no crack. But I'm going to sand it anyway and make sure. Then I'm going to do that last bit with this. And then we'll start cleaning it up. We are now back into the die, into the press. And we're going to give it that last bit of pressure. That it will go. And that's it. Should be good. Let's have a look. Third straight. Looks good. Now to start cleaning it up. Not too bad. Could do with a little bit of a squeeze to make it fit nice and tight, but for now, it's good enough. Okay, we'll set up. She runs. Maybe yeah. Just want to get a little bit of that edging on the inside, nice and cleaned up. And having variable speed. Next life in the world of difference. The cleanup on the well. Being that it's copper nickel, you also pick up on a lot of the uh, edgings and so forth are all but golden colour. Voila, see there? Copper colour edging and silver looking, although it's not silver, it's nickel edging. And I have it the other way around, so the other side. Now, depending on what kind of a person you are, you can leave this as it is on the outside. Um, some people like to have uh, some darkening done in the background, therefore patina is being done. But this coin usually comes out looking quite nice, with a bit of a shine in it. Inside just needs some work. That's where steel wool comes in. Uh, double zero, double zero, and uh, does the job quite nicely. As you can see there, and the other side. Let's have a look. Not too bad. And you can use the same on the outside. Depending on how shiny you want it and how much of the darkening you want away, you would like your detailing to stick out. So leaving a little bit behind does help, but then you can always do a complete shiner as well, where really everything is high gloss polished and it looks pretty smart. But that usually only gets done on those items that are actually silver, it tends to work better. Copper nickel 
always tends to have a bit of a darkling behind it. John battles to get away. Use one's Dremel to get even more of a polish or clean than Clean it up and see what it looks like underneath. Came out as a nice shiner. Not too bad. Looking pretty snazzy, I must say myself. And oh, there we go.